Ureman Parifces, she didn't move on the Gideo of Chide. Washum Kanyor Shader deadline had Gavas Hunter next, the Ritsedo Amen deadline a Kernitas or Tasahositavaz, it's a dotas or Hashvaz, Uyete deadline a Gushasvi, Stanak Zero Ban. Upon a white Kernak deadline, it's a doe, Ashadan Kerke, Kishort, Mirmas Naget Nerekernan Stogen, who says the feedback tam, Vice Carver Nenora, deadline a short Hargink Mega Museum, where a Fedefka Martora Uargelej Nahor Chapat Vaur Patore, Hargel of deadline, is Kamartik of Keru Argelena Sink Esor Irkun, who Kerner Iran Kavelisha advantage Junain. Avedi Lav Madazelu Khan and Martikov Kerchish deadline in Engerge. I think that Hargang Megas Musin, Hargang deadline, Tasa Hosi Jamanaga, Azamati Pahov deadline chair, Pan Quish chair, never of a devish for me, Azamati Poha, Azamati Poha in Neder Melurish Mastagetin. By the Jamanaga, Hortkudank, Octa Gorzel, Visionary Miadmenael, were of a dev Doricedo and Miss Panera, Avelita Jvar Kerning, Amazit. Ah, make a measure Edikaik Normadnik, Technic Popo Hutim, were of a dev Ramis Chikarna Carta, who Narin M. Dicarta Ramis Terem. Dab? Super. Yep, Shapoyo. Okay. So let me try to share my screen. I'm disabled to you can. share this. You can. Yep. All right. Okay, now you can see it, right? Let me change the landscape. It's actually, it should be better now. So, uh, do we have any questions from the uh, first lecture? No. Any question? Do you want me to clarify, to repeat something, to explain better? Was it tough? Was it was it uh, not like was it difficult? No, it was easy. Okay, cool. Then let's uh, start with the lecture two. And remember the last time? The last time I was uh, saying uh, that uh, we can. I was. I explained uh, what is econometrics. I explained what is the model, and uh, does anyone, can anyone tell me what is the model? Anyone? This is something that you should know. I mean, it's uh, it's a very, the whole point of uh, this lecture of uh, our analysis is uh, simplified uh, description of reality. It's it's it is uh, a, this, it is the version of reality, and also we said that there is a famous uh, George Box uh, quotation that uh, said, "All models are wrong, but some of them are useful." Right. So that's why we model stuff. I mean, the, the Einstein's model is like uh, better, more useful than the Newton's one now. I mean, Newton one also is useful. So any model is uh, a version of reality, wrong racial version of reality, and uh, you can, but some of them are useful. So that was the point. And then we, we went to the regression and we uh, talked about the linear regression particularly. And we showed how to, estimate this linear regression using the data. So let me write this. Um, okay, so we say that, um, that uh, we have this regression model
on the population level. And the only thing that we assume is uh, expectation, conditional expectation of model errors. Y is dependent variable. X is independent variables. U is model error. Oh, it's like combined effect on X, on Y apart from X. And the only thing that we needed to estimate this kind of a model, like to, this model to make sense was uh, this uh, assumption. And if you remember, I was, uh, I was saying that uh, we need to make two assumptions, that uh, assumption one is uh, expectations of the U unconditional one is zero and assumption two that the expectation, conditional expectation of uh, model error is zero. And I was saying, I was trying to show that uh, actually A2 implies uh, A1. So basically this one is uh, redundant from A2. And the way you do this is, uh, you know that the, uh, by the law, by the law of iterated expectations, very useful result. I mean, it's, uh, by the law of, uh, it's, it's a property of conditional expectations. You know that uh, unconditional expectation of U equals to the expectation of the unconditional expectation. This is, this is the result of the property of conditional expectations. This is basically the way you uh, use the law of iterated expectations. So now you know by assumption A2, what is this? By Assumption two, it is zero, right? It is zero. So what, 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 what it means that unconditional expectation of U is expectation of zero, hence it is zero. So basically, the, the reason why I'm doing it, 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 the only assumption that we need, the only assumption we need to find a causal relationship between access and y is assumption two. Uh, yeah. Expectation of u given x is zero. Is it clear? It was just a remark from the last time. So now today what I want to talk about is, um, is about consistency. Today, outline. I want to talk with you about uh, consistency. I remember from the last time that uh, when I used to estimate the model, then uh, I just uh, found out the closed form for these uh, parameters for theta. And I did not uh, went to the consistency because I don't, didn't have uh, time. But this is the crucial part. I mean, it is a very, what, what we want to estimate is basically um, consistent estimates. The second thing I want to talk about is the um, interpretation of coefficients or estimates. 
And the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, endogeneity issues. And this is basically, you will see that um, it is about uh, violation of uh, violation of assumption that we needed violation of uh, A2, or you can say it differently, exogeneity, exogeneity assumption, or you can say it uh, zero conditional mean assumption. And by in the indigeneity issues, I will I will uh, inside I will briefly talk about the um, uh, types types yeah types of endogeneity yeah but better better examples examples of endogeneity. And then uh, we will use, we will try to solve these endogeneity issues. How to solve endogeneity problem. And the answer is by instrumental variables. So for now, do you guys uh, have any question? Everything is all right, right? Okay. So if everything is all right, then uh, let's uh, talk about consistency. This was a outline. Um, consistency. I briefly will uh, go from the model to the uh, or less uh, estimates and uh, look uh, what we have here. So just remember that we had the model and it was y as a dependent variable equals alpha node plus x uh, prime transpose beta naught plus u, right? And then we said that we can rewrite one as um, y equals to x tilde transpose theta naught plus u, where x tilde equals to one and x with uh, what kind of dimension can you help me you have one as a scalar you have x as a vector so what kind of uh, dim dimension does x tilde have x tilde has a dimension of one plus dimension of uh, X, right? By one. This is it. I mean, dimension of X, uh, dimension of X uh, depends on the dimension of X. It's basically, if you think about X as a vector of uh, some uh, regressors without like uh, an intercept, then it becomes like X one, uh, until xk, where k can be any number, and it's k by one. So this can be like one plus k by one. So it was in the notes. Just, uh, just, just see it last time. Uh, and theta naught is defined as 
alpha node and beta node, right? And um, what can you tell about the dimension of um, X tilde and beta and theta node? They're equal, right? Because, uh, because you have here scalar and here vector and the dimension is what, one plus K by one. So, okay, we, we wrote it in this very compact form too. And uh, we decided, we, we assumed that the uh, expectation, conditional expectation of u given x is zero. And then we asked the question, how to estimate it? How to estimate alpha and beta node? And the answer was uh, use ordinary least squares and the data. So what we did, we basically said that, uh, okay, now we have uh, Y as a data, individual data cross-sectional data, and we have uh, x1, j, and x, k, j. So, I mean, it can be any data for n number of individuals. You have a sample of data, and y here is the dependent variable, and we want to explain y given x. The way that uh, we build our regression model, of course, you need to remember it is by the theory, uh, that the uh, economic theory that, uh, that you can explain that there is a causality between uh, x's and y's. You cannot, as I told you the last time, you cannot uh, regress the wages on the temperature on the um, Hawaii or something that is going on on Mars because there is Excuse me, there was a question. Hello. So let me know if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. So uh, I was uh, saying that uh, the way you try to regress something on something, it is always, uh, it relies on the economic theory and uh, the causation is a logical uh, concept. So you have to be, sure that um, there is a mechanism, there is a link, there is a story why this X explains Y, why education explains wage. So there should be a story. And uh, what we did, we said that define U as YJ minus some alpha now, Let me yg x tilde j and some some theta some theta just uh, just some theta it's not a theta node or something it's just some theta it's 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 uh, the it is uh, the way the you define this object this is the way that you define and we said that um, this theta. After the maximization, it is we said that it is the um, uh, minimization of the sum of uh, least squares, right? The way that you find out is uh, a hat ls beta uh, hat ls i this 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 kind of uh, theta hat uh, then ls is by minimizing this object, right? 
And the way that we did it, you can you can look at your last I mean notes. Uh, take a look at your last notes. I, I just don't want to derive everything uh, again because there was the system of equations and we we did this maximization, took the derivatives, first order the conditions and stuff like this. Take a look in your notes. Uh, theta ls equals to this object. It was uh, x tilde j, x tilde j uh, with the transpose. And here you had uh, inverse, I think it was n g1 x tilde j by y j. Right, and we said that this object here it is a it is a it is a matrix. It is a square matrix. Dimension of what? A dimension of uh, one plus k by one plus k. Because you have x that is a dimension of one plus k, and you have x transpose which is a dimension of k by one k plus one by one. So when you get this multiplication, you basically get a whole matrix with the dimension of one plus k by one plus k. And this one, this one is a vector. This is a matrix. This is a vector. Uh, what you have here is uh, x, uh, no, you have first one just uh, using the definition of uh, uh, x tilde. We have x1 here, and then here you have xk, right? So, and then it is multiplied by scalar uh, yj, the result j's. So what you have here is a vector of uh, the dimension of one plus k by one, right? And what happens when you multiply the matrix one plus k by one plus k by the vector of one plus k by one, you get a vector of the dimension of one plus k by one, right? This is what we have. And, uh, and the question is, the question is, uh, the question is, when you, when you look at this uh, expression here, it is the most crucial one here right now that we denoted the equation three. The equation three depends on, uh, on N, on the sample. Theta LS depends on the sample size. You can write it like this. And the question is what we recovered here. The question is what we recovered, what we recovered is theta had less, but is what we recovered the theta ls equal to theta naught that we need it. Because remember the goal of all this thing was uh, to estimate the equation, uh, the structural equation, the equation one. And uh, we write it like uh, two, but I mean, what we want to, what we are interested in is this uh, thing, because this is the model, right? On the population level. We are interested in theta naught. So, the question is what the, uh, theta ls, is it equal to theta naught? Well, the, the answer is that uh, theta naught, we need to see the behavior of theta ls and uh, as n goes to infinity. 
we just need the uh, limiting behavior. In the limiting behavior, we can see whether theta, our estimates, they equal the population level. So intuitively, what it means, it is uh, basically when you gather the data, as you increase, it might not be that your theta hat alas that you estimate from the model, from, from, from the data, it is different from the population level. But as you increase the population uh, in your sample, like in, as you increase your sample size, as n goes larger, larger, and larger, you can get some uh, properties of uh, theta hat, uh, how it behaves. And, uh, and the short answer is that uh, indeed, as n goes to infinity, you have this estimation, estimation like this theta ls hat equals to theta naught, which we need. So let's uh, just uh, open this uh, theta ls n. So recall that we had this object I forgot the summation <laughs> do you have any questions I, I I know that I'm going uh, in a very a bit shady maybe places but if you don't feel comfortable please let me know I will make sure that you understand everything it's all right okay all right yeah good so so you have right now this uh, i will do some manipulation right now so just uh, uh, look at what i do do you agree that i can rewrite this uh, object as 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 i'm writing the same thing I'm writing the same thing, but I will add. Do you agree that this thing is uh, the same? Do you agree that it's, uh, it's the same? Okay. Uh, because uh, just uh, just by the uh, I mean what is one over n? I'm I'm you, you see that there is an inverse, right? Yeah. So this is a scalar. This is a scalar multiplying the matrix. It's basically you can you can see it as one over n. Yeah. So what happens is basically you are uh, multiplying this matrix and. Uh, Mm, this when you when you invert it right uh, it becomes as uh, n like uh, you can take it out from the uh, matrix and this one too and it will be i mean they will cancel out this is what i'm saying right really you are not adding any anything else like you are basically doing this manipulation to uh, to give it this form you are not it's like uh, uh, you have uh, this multiplication and you are adding uh, n by n which is like uh, multiplied by one and uh, what we can see right now you can you can now recall that uh, this yj here, it resembles something, right? Use here, use uh, two. Recall that, okay, let me write it like this. I'm going to be honest quite slow, but, uh, but you know, I think it's, it's good to 
understand uh, what's going on here because this this concept is a very important concept in the econometrics. One over n, I can write it. I can open it. I, I will open it y using two. You see, right? Two here. So it is, um, I have here uh, X tilde transpose theta naught plus U. I'm not doing like any fancy math here, basically. It's, uh, it's, it's very straightforward. And now what we can do, we can open the uh, brackets, right? What we can do is, um, is, is uh, it is the same as saying that one over n, it is xj, xj tilde, this one has the transpose, just a transpose, minus n divided by one n, j equal to one x, j, now x tilde, this one is J, this one is J. You see, I'm making some notational mistakes. So, and also we have the, the second part. The second part is plus, again, this monster one over N, NJ by one, XJ tilde by XJ tilde, Transpose minus one multiplied by one over n x. Any questions? So uh, x j tilde by u j. Do you agree? So now what you can see, what you can really tell me about this thing now, that, uh, okay, theta, theta here, right? Theta doesn't depend on J. Theta can be taken out of the uh, summation, right? Because it doesn't depend on J. So what you can see here is, uh, is really this thing, is a matrix and this uh, one is its uh, inverse. They cancel out each other. Okay. So now you have theta naught plus, plus uh, this remaining part. Mm -hmm. Because you, you cannot cancel it out because it doesn't cancel out any, 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 any anyhow. So you have this part. Oh, wait, I forgot to put. xj by uj, right? Okay, let me denote it by four. Okay, now what we can say that uh, how it behaves say, in the limit as n goes larger and larger. So you see right now that yes, that this theta ls here, there is some relation to this theta naught. There is some relation, but you have this extra term. Yeah. And um, the question was whether theta ls uh, is equal to theta naught. It depends on this uh, object. It depends on this object. So what we can do is uh, 
control uh, for this uh, object as n goes to infinity to make it really uh, um, try to make it to zero. And if we, if we manage to do this, then theta ls as n goes to infinity is exactly theta naught, what we are interested in. So intuitively, it means that as you increase your sample size, you get closer, closer to your population level. So, so now let's, let's now uh, uh, talk about the limiting behavior. So what I want to show you, like it is the limiting behavior for the, this uh, object here in four, the, the object here is X and U, they are random. So you cannot apply, I mean, you know, right? It, uh, you know uh, what is the convergence of the random variables, right? Did you have a probability in statistics? I hope you know it because the convergence of the real numbers and like deterministic uh, variables and the stochastic variables, they are a bit different. So, uh, so you need to use the law of large numbers to say uh, that uh, this uh, object converges to something. So you can see that immediately this uh, object here is uh, a sample mean because you have this matrix and what you do is uh, you average, you divide it by the number of the sample, if each, each uh, object. So it is a sample average. So for, if you see it in the limit, the same goes to infinity by four, uh, you can see that uh, it is a p -lim of n goes to infinity theta naught plus one over n g1 x g, I think it was, wait, x g transpose minus one by one over n. U, G. So what happens here is uh, you see the theta naught here. I mean, do you do you see what I mean? This theta naught, it doesn't depend on n, right? Hey, I have a question. So you can uh, take it out by, I mean, probability limits. They are a bit slightly different, but not uh, very much. So you have this uh, huge uh, object. Let me denote it like this, minus one like this. And what we can say, it will, uh, this, this object will, uh, will go, will be equal to the expectation of X by X prime and here, you will have expectation of X and U. This is uh, by the law of large numbers. Hey, I have a question. Yeah, it's, it's the, the, the sample of, uh, intuitively, let me write it this way, intuitively, the sample averages converge in probability to the population averages. This is it. So now you have uh, theta naught plus E X X prime minus one E 
x u. So you have this object, right? It's saying goes to infinity. Uh, and we don't know, we don't know uh, uh, what is uh, this uh, object. Because this object cannot, I mean, if it's not zero, then it will bias our uh, theta LS that we estimate. If we, if, let me write it this way, if EX, X prime X U is not zero, then um, P Lim of theta LS N S N goes to infinity is not uh, theta naught. You understand, right? Because if it's not zero, then then what you get is not equal to theta naught, which you are interested in. So, in the sense, uh, uh, we need to impose some conditions here to make it zero. So, uh, remember, we had the uh, assumption of uh, two. Assumption of two that is uh, the use uh, assumption. E to find out what is expectation of you of X, uh, unconditional expectation of X U. Do you understand what I'm doing right now? Are you following? So basically what I'm trying to do that uh, um, I'm trying to uh, show that uh, what uh, uh, this object is, uh, is not zero. It is not zero. This, this object, do you see why it doesn't show that it's red? Okay. You see that this one is not zero because you have some like uh, uh, random variable and you are, it's, it's not zero. It's like a random variable and, and what it is like, it's a, uh, it's a variance. It is not zero for the random variables. Uh, variance is not zero because uh, if it was zero, then it would be like a degenerate random variable, which is like uh, the same as saying that X is deterministic. So the, uh, the part that can, can be zero is this part. So we want to understand how, is it zero or not? So uh, remember that uh, we have uh, this assumption. So we will use this assumption of uh, conditional zero uh, mean conditional assumption to find out what is the unconditional expectation of X and U. Uh, remember that it is the same, it is, uh, Remember that this one implies that ex expectation of u is zero, right? Do you agree? Yes. And, and and uh, remember, like. Uh, Recall the correlation, uh, co covariance formula, covariance formula. What is the covariance of uh, U X and U? Does anyone know? I think now. Okay. It is the expectation of uh, X and U minus expectation of X multiplied by expectation of U, right? I mean, it is the formula. You just need to, it is, it is defined like this, defined like this. 
right? And now what we can do, uh, we know that this thing is zero by, by here. May I ask a question? And then you get the covariance of X and U equal to X and U, right? And then I can use, uh, I can use the properties of expectation, conditional expectation. I can use the properties of conditional expectation to write expectation of uh, ux. Let me write it this way. It's, it's more convenient to write it xu is equal to the um, expectation it's it's equal to it is an unconditional expectation is equals to the conditional expectation of uh, uh, u and x given x it is simply by the law of iterate expectation Do you have any questions? No. Now, uh, what you can do here, it is the same as saying that expectation of this conditional expectation, when you make X uh, known, right? When you condition on X, then by the property of uh, conditional expectation, this X becomes known. And it simply comes out of this expectation. So what you have here is, uh, is uh, X by expectation of conditional expectation of U and X here, right? Yes. This is, this is, let me write it down because I think it, it, it looks a bit shady what I'm doing here. <laughs> uh, Property of conditional expectation. I mean, look, this one, and I'm, I'm saying the same thing, but uh, in a different ways. <laughs> Maybe not, not uh, that obvious right now, but uh, I'm writing you at least here um, this uh, hints uh, how you can get it because it's all what I'm using is basically the this uh, law of iterative expectation and some properties of the conditional expectation. So it's uh, it's nothing really complicated. Uh, just you need to be uh, a bit uh, trained how to deal with these kind of things. So. So now, now uh, remember this one equals to this one, right? It is the same. So now we have uh, this this very interesting information here. What is this one? By our assumption, remember we had this assumption that uh, uh, zero conditional uh, mean assumption. It is zero, right? Yeah. Tell me, <laughs> tell me that it is zero. Because I need it. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, everything will be messed up. So, what we have here is expectation now of x multiplied by zero. You get the, I will be extra detailed, expectation of zero. Well, expectation of uh, uh, zero is zero. <laughs> Do you see now the chain, how it uh, works? And we checked, we checked that expectation of X and U equals to zero by assumption. Let me write it this way. We checked that this expectation of X, U equals to zero if
This one is zero. So now we have everything. I mean, what we can do here, uh, let me even uh, denote it by star. So now where we can use it, anyone have any guess uh, where we can use this result, the star? In where form. we can in the form? exactly in the four but here be, here it's better let me let me write it there, like five. <laughs> yeah because four was here it's not in the best uh, form uh, here now it's 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 better form because we applied the law of large numbers we got this kind of expectations and uh, we, we, we really need to be very clear uh, with which object we are working on. We are working with this one, not, uh, with, uh, not, with, uh, not with this one. Uh -huh. So uh, five, if you use star, it becomes, Pilim as n goes to infinity, theta ls by n uh, equals to Pilim equals to theta naught plus Pilim. Ah, wait, it becomes like this. There was a inverse, right? I hope I'm writing it right. Right? Oh, wait. You see, when I when I start making one like notational mistake, then I, I will start making mistakes all the way. Here you see, I, I forgot tilde. I have here tilde, of course, it doesn't appear. I mean, we are working with X tilde. So it, it's, it's everywhere, it's like this. Sorry. Uh, may I ask, I ask a question? Yes, yes. Uh, Peel and cement is equal, are equal. Uh, what? Peel and cement are equal. I don't hear you. P-I-L-I-M. Uh, okay, probability limit, yeah. Uh, and humans. Are there any uh, difference? With, with P-Lim and uh, Lim? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the probability limit applies to the stochastic objects. Uh, probability limit applies to the uh, random objects, while the limit, it applies to, uh, to the real variables real variables that are that are uh, not stochastic they are deterministic i mean uh, uh, probability limit at um, at uh, uh, случайно величина okay uh, limit это просто про uh, uh, не стохастические uh, перемены So, okay, now you have this, uh, I mean, everything here right now. You have everything here. Yeah, let me just uh, add this covariance and stuff like this. We are doing, we are, we are going quite uh, slow to be honest. But you know, I think it's good to see it. So uh, you see, right, that uh, this one is zero by star. We just showed it because we, we proved that uh, uh, under this condition, 
under this condition, this part will be this this object will be zero. So it becomes just theta naught. That's it. QD. Um, that's it. That's it. That's what I wanted to say about the consistency. So you see, right? That uh, this one implies consistency. For example, if 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 it was not if if it was violated, then uh, it would uh, have uh, the axu if it is if if this relation if it's not uh, uh, how to say this no, no i don't want to say mm, i don't want to say something that uh, will be very general this one implies consistency which is implied by <laughs> this one this one, I mean, it's it's it, 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 the unconditional expectation. It is the consequence of uh, the harder assumption that we imposed. So, to in order to consistently estimate, we need a weaker condition. It is a, I mean, covariance is a linear uh, relation. So uh, it is, uh, it is much weaker. It is, uh, it is much weaker than the exogeneity. But uh, but for causality, we need expectation of u given x equals to zero. Why? Because for causality, it is uh, it is uh, for causality. Let me write it down. Why? Because the causal uh, relationship requires. this one recall that y is um, alpha node plus x transpose beta plus u right and uh, what we can do is uh, uh, try to uh, uh, write to predict y given x and it would be expectation of alpha node plus x uh, transpose beta node plus u given x. And it would be alpha node plus x prime beta node plus expectation of u given x. And when you say uh, the causal effect of uh, uh, some random, some x, for example, the causal effect of uh, of uh, kth variable x. For example, if y was wage and kth variable was education, what if what is the uh, uh, effect uh, on wage if we increase uh, by one the education? It would be. Um, beta k beta k plus plus this uh, d u x by dx k right and uh, 
And for causality, I mean, uh, the thing is that uh, we, 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 uh, we want it to be zero because, uh, because U is an observable. So in this sense, uh, for causality, we need because otherwise it will move around and uh, impose some problems. Okay, now I'm done with consistency. <laughs> now I'm, I'm done with consistency. If you have any questions, please uh, ask me. So uh, just a, I, I, uh, uh, to resume everything like, so you understood, right? Why we need uh, consistency? Because we want, when we use, uh, uh, when we use data, when you use data, it's a limited information, right? Just remember that 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 that, that trick that it is observable data is uh, it's it's a small information. We don't know about the reality everything. So uh, as you get more data, uh, more and more and more data, um, under certain conditions, you can estimate the true uh, model parameters. This is the consistency that you can, as your sample size gets uh, larger, your estimates, they will be closer and closer to your uh, true uh, parameters. Any questions? Okay. Now, if, if there is no questions, let me just briefly say uh, something about the uh, interpretation. Of estimates. So, recall, right, recall that you had this uh, uh, model, alpha node plus X transpose beta node plus U. Uh, and uh, yeah, and as, as we said here, above, under, The assumption that conditional expectation of u given x is zero, we can see the change of the conditional expectation of x given change in x to be beta k. Right, and how how we how we uh, say it in English words? Can anyone interpret the beta? Okay, maybe you know. Okay, if not, then then basically what it means it is assuming causal interpretation. exists by uh, exogeneity assumption holds, then beta k is the change in y due is the causal change. Let me write it this better way. Is the causal change in Y due to X, due to change, due to unit change in X, K.
given all else fixed right because when you take the derivative you keep everything else fixed and uh, so this is it this is the interpretation and uh, i don't want to uh, talk more about uh, this uh, interpretation because if you are interested you can just read about it i mean it's not that hard to understand uh, how interpretation how you interpret uh, estimates but i want to talk a, a very uh, big problem right now about the problem of endogeneity endogeneity issues and frankly what it means frankly I read even frankly <laughs> what it means is that um, in star, remember, right? In star here, I have here the star here. Uh, e x u is not zero. So basically, uh, um, the endogeneity here arises from the fact that um, you have some regressors in the model that is correlated with the model error. And when your regressor is correlated with uh, your model error, what happens that uh, you, you get uh, uh, inconsistent uh, estimates. So you see, right? This effect of um, this effect here, mm -hmm. it will not disappear. It will not disappear. Uh, because uh, if, if expectation of x tilde u is not zero, so it will add to your theta node, the true theta node that you are interested in, it will add some noise. We don't really know about the magnitude of this, uh, this uh, part. So it can be, I mean, huge. I mean, it can be even like, uh, you know, you, you, you estimate this one, of course, right? You estimate this one from the data, but... Uh, but uh, but uh, you get the true uh, theta naught with something that you have no idea what uh, direction, what it is. You might have like, for example, um, yeah, some huge negative number and it will uh, bias your theta naught. Like uh, it will bias your theta naught in the sense that uh, it will uh, have a negative bias. Or it can be like positive, uh, and it will uh, bias it upward. So instead of getting the true theta naught, you get something else. Like your regression in your data, or your computer will show you that hey, like education uh, has the influence on wage uh, in this amount. But what you are actually getting, maybe, maybe, what would you expect? How education? Um, Okay, not maybe not education. I mean, for example, if if yeah, um, like for example, what would you expect that uh, if uh, in some city they build more hospitals, uh, how would it uh, ex uh, uh, influence? I don't know in the number of uh, uh, ill people. It will help uh, you people. Yeah, you should. I mean, logically, it makes sense that okay, you will have more hospitals, uh, people will get uh, more care, and uh, their uh, the the uh, illness will be. I mean, they will be healthier. Uh -huh. 
now we're all in that. Let, let be like health, like a level of health, like number of health people or something like this. How it, uh, how the uh, hospital uh, construction of hospitals uh, affect the health, number of healthy people, something like this. Like uh, let's let's uh, not be applied people. Just uh, suppose this. I mean, you would expect that more hospitals will. Uh, increase the number of uh, health people, healthy people. But, but you know, when you estimate the data and it was actually done, I mean, if you, if you naively, if you try to do it by yourself, you will, you can, since you get this, this, this very strange thing here, it can actually, uh, it will downward, it will bias it so downward that you can see that uh, hospitals, uh, the places where you have more hospitals, uh, it increases, uh, it, it decreases the healthy people, as if uh, number of hospitals, they make worse uh, the situation, they make people ill. But, I mean, it doesn't make sense because uh, if you capture the, because this, 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 uh, this uh, part is violated. So that's why, I mean, you have this correlation. It's actually called like selection bias. I mean, but, uh, but the, the 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 problem of indigeneity arises in the um, in the in the correlation between uh, uh, regressors and uh, um, model error. So let me write it here: consequences of like uh, indigeneity. is the situation when uh, when yeah let's write it a bit better when uh, one of the regressors at least one of the is correlated with the model error. Oh my God, I think I think I have a, a very uh, few times. I think I, I stressed a lot about the consistency that uh, the ingenuity. Uh, How many? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay, let me think about what I can do in these 10 minutes. Okay, well, how about Okay, maybe we will not go to the two SLS, but I will tell you that how you can fix the indigeneity just in 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 uh, the concept, like how you can really think about it. But uh, what really is indigeneity is it is the situation. It is the situation when at least one of the regressors is correlated with the model error. I mean, just imagine it this way: you had uh, uh, like uh, you have. Uh, Suppose like you have dependent variable y, one. I'm changing some a bit of notations. Now I'm adding this one here. You have um, alpha naught plus x transpose beta naught plus y two gamma naught plus u. Now you have the 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 particular uh, thing here is going like this one is independent dependent endogenous independent and exogenous 
but this one is uh, potentially endogenous. So in the sense that uh, you know that the expectation of uh, u given x is zero, but uh, you don't know with, 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 with this one, you don't know anything. So like, I mean, uh, that you have actually the covariance of y2 and u is not zero. And it is the same as saying that the expectation of y2 given u is not zero. So what problem you have here is uh, you get uh, inconsistent estimates. The consequence of covariance of Y2 given U is you get inconsistent estimates by by OLS. You understand, right? So if 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 you use uh, OLS or the least squares as we did it with the uh, uh, previous model when we didn't have uh, this issue, this issue was not present in the first class and what I was doing in the consistency, this issue was not present. Everything was clear. Everything was clear that you don't have uh, uh, X, uh, uh, that, that you don't have the indigenous variables in the, um, in the uh, uh, model. But uh, one, one, one possible solution would be, possible solution, get rid of endogenous regressors. I mean, you can, you can uh, just, uh, I mean, if they are not, if they are not, uh, if they are not, correlated with other regressors. But, uh, but I mean, uh, many situations there are that uh, you are interested exactly in the uh, endogenous regressor. Like, for example, take uh, effect of education on wages. take the effect of education on wages and uh, you have, uh, let me write it down like, uh, uh, why let it be like wage, some alpha zero plus uh, alpha one education And you know, you know that uh, uh, the wage is determined by the ability. Would you say that ability uh, determines the wage? Do you think that ability affects the wage? So yeah, I mean, it makes sense. If if we, ability like more able people should learn more. I mean, it's 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 very natural thing to say. 
So just look, but but how you can measure ability? Let me ask you this question. You don't, <laughs> because there is nothing there. Like uh, the, 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 the the true ability, I mean, it's it's unknown thing. It's 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 uh, it's a very uh, abstract uh, thing. That I mean, of course, ability. Like more able people, they there are more able people in some sense. But you don't uh, see it. Like you don't know uh, measure it somehow. I mean, it's not like you have two hands and uh, you know, <laughs> it's not this evident and uh, or it's like. Um, yeah, so ability is, is unobservable. Let me write it better. Unobservable. So what the best you can do, you can just uh, uh, regress wage on education. You can regress wage But you see that uh, now this uh, error, it has uh, ability. Wait. Ability there and you. Do you agree that I'm writing the same thing? Yes, I agree. Uh, so, do we? So, do you think that uh, education and ability are correlated? Uh, yes, if they uh, impact each other. So yeah, you see that, I mean, uh, we do not observe this. Uh, this is a model error, right? The epsilon. This is the model error. And it is correlated with education because it has ability inside. Covariance of uh, education and epsilon is the covariance of the education. And... Um, uh, alpha to ability plus u, which is uh, literally, I mean, uh, covariance of uh, uh, edu and u, which is zero plus uh, alpha two covariance of It do an ability. And this thing is not, uh, it's, it's not, it's not zero because educate, I mean, you could say that uh, more able people, they are more likely to get more education. Exactly. So in this sense, when you have this kind of correlation, the uh, the uh, this 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 will lead this will lead this this leads to remember that that, that uh, expectation of uh, x tilde u being zero it will not be like this it will be uh, like this and you get inconsistent estimates. So I, I don't have time to talk about more. So uh, I like uh, I would be glad to talk to you more, but uh, I mean it's 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 time now. So what you can possibly do is uh, is uh, use uh, instruments and uh, uh, two SLS two stage least squares. least squares instead of or less to fix 
endogeneity and consistently estimate uh, parameters. Did you get uh, what I was talking today? Uh, everything is clear. Uh, uh, thank you for, for your class. Uh, we are very happy to have uh, such a useful class. I think we can uh, continue our classes in another uh, another theme, another uh, time, because yeah. now our um, class is very 